All right guys, David, Express Auto, back with our 4L60 shelf build. We've been playing with this thing a lot today for some reason. I don't know why everybody keeps saying we need to get it done, but I don't know, here we are. Anywho, <laughs> don't forget like, share, subscribe. Sorry, my camera guy's over there doing stupid stuff. If I get hit today, it's, it's on him. Anywho, we are slowly getting down to the end of this build and we are to the point now of putting our case items in and then we are going to start on our valve body. I don't build transmissions like a lot of the builders that I've been around or a lot of the builders that I've watched and a lot of the builders I know. I like to mix parts and pieces. Some guys think that I'm an absolute idiot and that's fine, I don't really care. I like to use multiple different brands of items in the same transmission. I think that it gives you a ultimately better product. Some of the things that the pendulous accumulator can do versus what the stock accumulator can do is just leaps and bounds better in my opinion. Uh, we've talked about the pin wearing and the accumulator pistons wearing and causing a cross leak and stuff. What we're talking about on that is actually the amount of oil that is lost through the clearance that is left in the pin to the accumulator and that oil that's lost is fourth clutch oil. When you're losing fourth clutch oil you're just taking away from the fourth clutch's capability of working and holding the pressure or the clutch plates together and keeping them from slipping. So that's why I'm so adamant about preventing cross leaks and trying to get as much sealed areas in the transmission as we can. The more leaks that we can solve and fix now the odds of this transmission living longer are way higher. There's things in my opinion that are not addressed in the Transgo kit that I personally address every time we build one. Some of the things that are not in the Transgo kit and not in the Sonax basis, base kit is the 2-3 shift valve. This is made by Sonax, it's the, eight, the HD series valve. This valve helps keep the coast clutches on does some other stuff but it keeps the coast clutches on while the fourth clutch is applied and really helps with the fourth clutch. I like to use the pinless accumulators, that's something we've talked about. We'll use it in the rear of the case, we'll use it in the forward accumulator, we'll use it in the one-two accumulator. I've had a lot of guys ask me, hey, why did you flip that accumulator upside down? Sonax's instructions has the accumulator domed down. Transco has their instructions dome up. Chevrolet did it both ways multiple different times throughout their lifespan of manufacturing this transmission. With the accumulator piston flipped upside down, you are essentially eliminating the accumulator's capability of working. So the oil comes in from the bottom of the accumulator and pushes up and it builds a certain volume of pressure and then it feeds to the clutch. If you flip the accumulator over, all you're doing is sealing that circuit 100% so it has no accumulation value going to the fourth clutch. The idea behind that is to get as much oil to the fourth clutch as quick as you possibly can. 4L60s, as we all know, have three, four clutch failure all the freaking time for a million different reasons. This is one of the big ones. Transgo started doing the upside down accumulator way back when, I don't know, probably before I was born, don't know. I think the first generation 700 R4s were out in like 82 and I wasn't born until 87. So if Transco had their hands in it, they probably flipped that sucker over then. But I don't know. We're going to start with installing our wiring harness and then we're going to get into the valve body itself. We're using a Rostra brand harness. I. Personally, I like to use AC Delco harnesses and AC Delco solenoids and as much AC Delco parts as I can, but the harnesses from AC Delco have been on different issues and Rostra or Transtar had one on the shelf ready to go. So we bought this one from them. Alan Humphreys always, always gets us our parts when we need them. So if you guys need some parts, call Alan. I'll get you taken care of. Now, because this is such a late model transmission, it is not your typical 4L60. Your typical 4L60 just has a rooster comb here and it doesn't have this little fancy black switch. This is the internal range sensor. Instead of having a range sensor bolted on the outside of the transmission, 
This one's got it on the inside. So we're gonna get our manual valve installed. I've already put our new manual valve seal in. That shift, shift valve selector seal, however you wanna call it, that thing is super important. You guys are gonna be building these on your own. That thing needs to be replaced every rebuild. I know it's no fun to do, but it needs to happen. We can lean that sucker over and we're going to put a roll pin in there. We're gonna bolt this down and then we're gonna start on putting the valve body and accumulator stuff together. So we'll be right back. All right, here we go. Now that we've got our harness installed and we've got our, whatchamacallit over there installed, that thingy there with that stuff there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That thingy is very important. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move on to our pinless accumulators. I know some of you guys are sitting there cringing because I'm going to crossbreed this thing and well, frankly, I don't care. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of the luby stuffs on there. We are going to use the yellow spring that is provided with the Transgo kit. You don't want it in there like that. That right there is wrong. You want it installed in more of a springy motion. And then we are going to put our piston in. The spring fits inside of the piston like so. So if it's not centered in there, it will not go down. You kind of got to wiggle it around sometimes. Get it starting the hole. You gotta wiggle it just a little bit. Ta-da! To daisies. All right. Another area that we are gonna differ away from the Transgo kit. Well, they don't really discuss the check balls in the 4L60 family. They give you a oversized check ball for the one area of the plate that likes to beat out a lot. Another area that I'm particular about, I like to change all my balls from steel over to the tour long ones. I know I can't say balls without giggling a little bit too, but here and there. We're gonna put a little brown check ball right in that location. Then we are going to move from there onto our one, two accumulator. We're going to say goodbye to Mr. Accumulator because well, we don't need it. Or accumulator pen, excuse me. Now we are going to get our Sonax accumulator out. Going to take us a check ball. I'm going to stick a check ball down in the hole. And we're going to take our punch. Not that punch. We don't want that punch. We want this punch. Seated flush at the bottom. Then we are going to take a chisel and we are going to put a star pattern across the bottom of the pin bore to where that check ball doesn't come out. In the event that it ever wanted to come out, it's not going to come out now. We're going to get our next Sonax accumulator piston ready here put our new ceiling ring and rubber ring on it <laughs> and we're going to install our transgo springs this particular kit we are going to use orange white orange Orange, white, orange, like so. If my memory's right. I'll double check that. Yep, I was right. And we're gonna sit those down inside of the bore. And we are going to put our piston in, like so. We're gonna set our piston off to the side for stuff and fun things to do in a little bit. For now, we are going to get set up to do our act. <laughs> going to get set up to look at a few other valves. So give us just a second here and we'll be right back. 
Alrighty, we are going to get this little clip out of this hole. If I can get my pick to grab a hold of it. Get that little turd out of there. Now this is an area that there's a lot of a lot of debates. 4L60 seemed to be a highly debated transmission, and I really don't know why. But we're gonna get this little plug out of here. Transgo, up until very recently, said for a long time not to worry about this bore. And I like Transgo and I believe them for a long time and I don't do that anymore. What I like to do on all of my rebuilds is replace this. The reason being is if this circuit is worn, you've got lockup feed coming in, you've got third clutch oil coming in, you've got multiple different areas where this could actually cause major issues later. The theory for a long time was if the actuator feed limit valve bore was to be wore out that the excess pressure would be dumped into the mainline circuit and it would actually help the transmission. I don't feel that it works that way. After looking at several diagrams and doing a lot of studying on how a the hydraulic circuit works, I think that it needs to have the lockup or the actuator feed limit valve reamed and replaced every time. We're going to install the Transgo shift kit and we're going to install the Transgo valves and springs that go where they are supposed to go, but we are also going to do this with our rebuild. So with that being said, I'm gonna set this thing up and normally we would, uh, we would attach this to a fixture and do a whole bunch of machine steps. I'm going to show you guys how you could do it in the real world if you had to do this. So we're gonna go from there. We're going to start with our reamers here. We've got to get a, not that one. Where do you get this toolkit at? That toolkit I got from uh, Transtar. Allen supplies that toolkit. Uh, it's a really nice kit. I've actually been using this kit for a long time and and have had really good luck with it. Uh, one thing that I'll tell you guys, if you are doing this, do not try to put this reamer in a drill. It does not need to be spun very fast. Uh, there's a lot of different types of cutting oils out there. Some guys say not to use transmission fluid, this, that, and the other. I typically will put this either in a solvent tank or put some WD-40 on it while I'm reaming. So since we're in here, I will grab some WD-40 and spray some on there while we are reaming. All right, now that we've got our reamer, we're going to put some WD-40 down in, in there and there. We're going to use this feed handle. I like to just put it against my hip and just, just let, the, let the reamer do her job. Being that we're not using a fixture, I all I'm doing is just keeping pressure on my arm to keep the valve body from moving. Not really, you don't apply pressure to a reamer, you just kind of let it do its own job. I was always taught to not spin your reamer if you don't absolutely have to while you're removing it. So I like to just take my time and just easily work it out. Remove our reamer jig. We'll get this thing blown out and we'll be right back. Alrighty, now that we have got our bore reamed and cleaned and 100%, whoop, nope, I see a chip. All done. Okay, 
now that we have our bore reamed and cleaned and ready to work here we're going to get our actuator feed limit valve out it's our new new valve new retainer clip and new spring going to put just a little bit not a lot of bit just a little bit of green loctite right there on that land and work it around try not to rub too much of it off get a nice get a nice film to it and we're gonna put this guy in the hole this valve will not drop in if you've reamed correctly if your bore is just a little loose the valve just pushes in real easy then you need to stop and take a pipe cutter and edge the last land where we put the Loctite and it'll swell it to where you could actually use it. So see if I can get this little clip down in here correctly. I think my needle nose may have magnetized themselves. Putting this clip in can be kind of cantankerous. But once it's in, you're set to rock and roll. Now the idea here is that Transgo gives you a spring that goes there. The spring that they give you is a white spring, which looks like this. So this spring is supposed to go inside of the original spring. Where do we lay that little guy? Okay. There it is. So this spring is supposed to go inside of this spring and that's your new spring set. I like to put this spring inside of this spring and use it like that. The reason I do that is this spring is actually just a little bit lighter than this spring. This is going to increase our baseline pressure about this much, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And then we're gonna put it back in. The idea here if you are not using a transgo kit if you are using just this valve and nothing else you're buying independent pieces from sonax to do this you only use a spring the factory only had one spring the sonax only has one spring ideally this spring should be the same diameter as this spring and we should be sliding them in together but it doesn't work once you've been reamed the bore. So we're gonna put them like that and we're gonna stick them down in there. Going to put our plug back in. We're gonna work it down in the hole. Going to put our retaining clip right back there. If I can get it in there. There we go. There we go. Make sure that clip seats all the way. All right. Now, we're gonna move on to our forward accumulator and work from there. We'll get all of our pieces out and we'll be right back. All righty. Now, we're gonna work on accumulator valves. Always like to give this guy a little shaking after we clean it and oil it and make sure it's nice and free going to open up the spring package here and find us an orange spring. Luck of the draw on that one. And we're going to put a little bit of goo in there, a little bit of goo on top of there, and spring on top. Gonna aim this guy just like so and drop it in. Make sure it bounces off the bottom a little bit. Make sure we roll, put our roll pin in correctly too. I'm gonna get that in place and make sure the roll pin's all the way below the surface there and move on to our shift valves. 
So we're not actually going to be changing one of the shift valves. We're only changing the two, three shift valve. So we're gonna get it in there. Mainly the drilling section of this. All of the Sonax parts that we're using today, you guys can buy independently. Don't have to buy the whole Sonax kit to get these parts. So we're going to take our drill and put an eighth inch drill bit in it and drill a hole through there. All right, we are working on this leg right here. And we're connecting this leg to this leg. We're gonna try to drill us a hole right here. And that modification has been made. Now the new shift valve will go in. As you can tell, they look quite a bit different. Make sure that the valve falls in and out of the bore. We'll drop it a couple of times. We'll lay it off to the side. Now, Get those out of our way. Move that out of the way. We're done with that package, done with that package. We are going to move on to this little roll pin right here. This roll pin we're pulling out goes in the abuse plug, is what it's called. Come here. Ta da! This is another part of the Transgo shift kit. Pull the abuse plug out. You put a very small steel ball inside of it, the spring, and you put your abuse plug back in. Now get our plug down here where it's supposed to be. Make sure it's straight. And the roll pin actually goes through the plug. It does not go in front of the plug. It does not go behind the plug. It goes through the abuse plug. Now, we're going to get our valve installed. But, before we install our valve, we're using our fanless accumulator, so we're going to get our check balls put in. Give us just a second to get set up for this, and we'll start putting balls in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to get our new Teflon seals on our forward accumulator. The original accumulator in this position was a plastic one and the plastic one is known for breaking and causing it to burn the forward clutches. So essentially everything that we're doing and the whole goal of what we're doing here is just to increase the likelihood of the transmission living longer. We all know that 4L60s have their problems and we all know that it's going to fail. Our job is to try to prevent the least amount of failures as we can to get the transmission on the road as long as we can. But ultimately, we know it's going to fail. So let's move forward. Nothing lasts forever. Nope. Cheap beer and cockroaches. ball. I like to put two balls in the hole. Same thing as the top there. We are going to stake. Going to put our new penless accumulator in. And we'll put our spring in. Now we are going to put our valve. The new Transgo yellow spring. And retainer plate. 
We torque all of our retaining plates on 4L60s to 100 inch pounds. There's discrepancies on what that number should be. That's the number I use. And if you don't like it, it's not my problem. So that's where we're at. And no, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that my arm is perfectly calibrated to 100 inch pounds. I would like it to be, but it's not. I thought it was. It's really close. I, I'm, I've been working on my calibration certifications, just not there yet. Ta da! All right, now we're going to move to the other end of the valve body. We've had fun over here, we're going to go over there. We're gonna start with our lockup valve. The, this particular transmission came out of a vehicle that had, that did not have the DOD displacement on demand, which is kind of interesting because this also has a turbine speed sensor. So it's a weird 4L60 in its own rights so that it has a normal lockup valve, but also it has a turbine speed sensor, which would say it's a DOD transmission. It is not. The vehicle that this is going in, this transmission is actually was purchased today. The guy that uh, seen the videos and decided he just had to have this for a project that he was building. I'm going to try to get as much details on the project whenever that time comes. But he is going to have this thing tuned. So we are going to be installing the Transgo lockup valves the way the Transgo tells you to install them. If this was a DOD application, which it should be for the year that it is, then we would not install this the same way. But with all that being said, we are going to install it the way that Transgo says to install it. So they give you a blue spring, I'll lay that off to the side, give you a new lockup valve, and they give you this little bolt. So you put your bolt in your valve and you stroke it back and forth, just give her the strokes. You just gotta plunge her in there as much as you can fast as you can, wiggle it side to side, try to hit every angle of that hole you, you can get in there. The whole idea here is to make sure that there's no burrs in the hole. If you got burrs in your hole, your valve's gonna stick. If the valve gets stuck, causes lockup concerns, burns converters, burns planetary sets up, causes lockup codes. So we know that our valve is free. We're going to put our blue spring in, we're going to put our valve in, threaded end first, and we are going to put our End plug back in place and our retainer. Retainer goes in that slot, just like so. The next valve that we're going to be playing with is a valve that's not in the Transgo instructions and it's, uh, it's in some of the Sonax instructions but not heavily. This is the 3 4 sequence valve and 4 3 sequence valve, all that crap. What this valve does is it holds fourth clutch oil. So, am I putting that in backwards? I don't think so. There we go. Make sure that valve is nice and free. Put our plunger on top of it. Make sure that it is stroking through the bore as smoothly as it's supposed to. Now, we're going to be installing a, another Sonax, Sonax product. In plug and O-ring kit for the 3-4 relay valve. What this does is another area that we're trying to prevent leaks. The 3-4 relay valve holds fourth clutch oil after it goes into fourth gear. Part of the problems that we see is if it is low on line pressure or if it is losing fluid because of a cross leak or whatever, then it's going to burn the 3-4 clutches again. So we're going to put this O-ring on the end of this new end plug. We're going to put it on top of the 3-4 relay valve. Just work it down into the hole, nice and smooth. And we're going to put our new retainer in, or reuse our retainer, sorry about that. Put that in there. What, that's, what that is actually doing there 
is the feed oil that is coming into this valve and pushing that valve down is le leaking out of that end plug. And that's just charge oil that you're losing, causing valve shuttle and causing other problems. So we're gonna put that new, new plug in there and we're gonna move forward. Another area of major issues with the shift valves on 4L60s is the abuse plug at this location. I'm not going to pull this abuse plug out right now because we've already vacuum tested this one and everything is doing what it's supposed to do. So if you are building these things, you always need to check that abuse plug. This valve body at this point is pretty much ready to put solenoids on and get on the transmission. So we're going to put some check balls in it and set this off to the side and get our separator played out. We'll be right back with you guys. All right, we've got our separator played out. We are just gonna go through here and drill the holes that Transgo says to drill. Transgo provides two different drill bits in their kit. Make sure that you use the correct one. I have seen people use the wrong one and boy do these things do some fun stuff whenever you drill the holes too big. There we are. That is all of our little holes. Now we've already taken the time to get our check balls in our valve body. We've got all of our new solenoids, AC Delco solenoids and new Borg Warner pressure control solenoid in there. We've got our check ball on our case, so we are ready to install the separator plate. But I felt something. I'm crazy. I didn't feel nothing. There are times, and this is one of those times, where I will reuse a separator plate that has a bonded gasket. The filters that are in this bonded gasket are more than sufficient for what needs to happen on a 4L60. Also, one thing I'm going to note here is we are not using the Transco part right there where it tells you to put the little wire hanger in it to keep the screen from collapsing on itself and causing a problem later. The reason we are not is because we are retaining these, the factory bond and separator plate. So we're going to get this guy lined up where it's supposed to be, start bolting parts to it. Just like all the other 4L60s, this one has the same three bolts that are eight millimeter. They have to be in this corner. If you do not put the eight millimeters in that spot, then you are taking a huge risk of locking up a gear train and causing total transmission failure on startup. So make sure you put your three bolts there. Otherwise it could go kaboom very fast. And it's not fun. Just a couple of bolts here and we'll bolt this valve down and see if we can't get this thing finished up. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy bolted down here. That's it. All righty guys, this thing is ready for a filter and a pan and a tail housing. I think you guys all know what the pan and the tail housing look like, so we're not gonna, not gonna waste your time putting that stuff on there just to just to watch, watch me put them on there. So, thank you guys as always for taking your time to watch our videos. We really, really appreciate it. We're trying to get as much information out as we can, just trying to help the next guy that's in his garage trying to figure out what the hell he's doing on a 4L60. Uh, if you guys have any questions, any concerns, any comments, any thoughts, you guys wanna see something else done or watch us build another one for the shelf and hopefully we can sell it before we're done, let us know. Hit us up in the comments and like and share and subscribe. See you on the next one.